Right, so Jeremy Corbyn, a man so vilified by our billionaire-owned press for so many years for want of a better country to live in and to such ridiculous levels, just about the only headline they had left between them was jam-bothering vegetable terrorist tortures marrow. However, their last-ditch desperation was spared when they got the anti-Semitism scam to stick, of course. Ask anyone to name something anti-Semitic Jeremy Corbyn has ever said. Good luck to them finding something. It was a scam. The scam stuck. And Keir Starmer, upon succeeding Corbyn as Labour leader, of course, picked up the anti-Semitism scam, fashioned it into the equivalent of a billy club, and has been battering Corbyn along with anyone who might make life slightly tricky for him with it, tarnishing all as racists. Hypocrisy on steroids, given Starmer's own track record to date. However, despite Team Keith successfully keeping Corbyn out of the parliamentary Labour Party, allegedly until such time he apologises in the very specific way Starmer wants him to, he is still a Labour member. No amount of an apology will ever suffice, of course. Corbyn could strip naked, lag himself in honey and allow the board of deputies to unleash a nest of bees on him. It would never be enough. Reinforcing that have been the reports of looking ahead to the next general election and pulling together candidates to contest seats. Starmer's Labour need him gone. Having allowed him to remain a Labour member, expelling him now without further reason would look pretty factional because... That's exactly what it would be. Nonetheless, Team Keith have a problem because they either readmit the guy who has been North Islington's MP since 1983. He's won the seat 10 times for Labour. He is incredibly popular there and remains so across the rest of the country, vocal Keithsters aside, and allow him to stand to be the MP again, or they've got to remove him entirely so he can't. With Starmer getting pulled up week after week in PMQs by Rishi Sunak in what is a pathetically weak attack aimed at Starmer's supposed supporter Corbyn previously, especially given how Starmer sabotaged that leadership and has demonised and ostracised Corbyn ever since, it's still pushing buttons upstairs. It's now being voiced publicly that Corbyn will never be allowed to stand for Labour again. The man is toxic to the future of Red's Toryism, God forbid. I don't think this is news to many socialists. I doubt it's news to Corbyn really either, though his remaining a Labour member, given how he continues to be treated, seems at odds with that. Perhaps he's daring the party to expel him. What would he do if he was? Would he stand as an independent to continue representing the people of Islington North? I certainly hope he did stand as an independent. I don't envy whoever Labour parachute in because Corbyn remains popular with his local constituency party. Labour could, of course, refuse to put a candidate up against him. Coming from Starmer's lot, this would look rather weak, though. However, the CLP there might refuse to back someone else. They'd certainly be overruled, of course. The authoritarianism in Labour these days would see a candidate imposed regardless of the wishes of local members. They don't matter. But you can't force people to campaign for them. And many would likely campaign for an independent Corbyn by preference. Hell, you'd have people from all over the country flocking to campaign for him. And you know it, whether you like the guy or not. Another interesting facet to this story is what would become a momentum if Corbyn runs as an independent? The group formed to push socialist policies in Labour, formed to support the agenda of then leader Corbyn. With no Corbyn in Labour, with other socialist MPs being lined up to be gotten rid of too, what future is there for that movement in Labour? Why stay? Would they go with Corbyn following the politics they supposedly represent? The fact is, there was never any intention to readmit Corbyn, even if he did apologise. In fact, the apology is owed to Corbyn for how he has been mistreated, the lies told, his record misrepresented, his reputation as a lifelong anti-racist trash. Also, rich people can continue to exploit ordinary working class people, too many of whom believe what they're told and act against their own interests. And if you're still saying Corbyn's an anti-Semite, you're still doing what the rich want you to do. And it's also the wealthy and powerful and influential never have to pay their fair share. 